Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. I want to thank you for tuning in to our program. If you're a first-time listener, stay tuned. I think you'll like our program. We're going to bring to you some of the things I think today can help a lot of people. Michelle, many people today are kind of in bondage mm -hmm. due to some of the things that they have uh, kind of stepped into without the real knowledge of the scriptures. So I want you to take us in, tell us where we're going today. I understand you got something between tithing and sowing, yes. which is a great difference. Amen. There is a big difference between tithing and sowing. So tithing is, is an obligation. Of course, we know that Abraham tithed in Genesis chapter 14. He tithed to Melchizedek, and Melchizedek is the type of Christ. And we know that Melchizedek had blessed him with the bread and the wine. And of course, the bread represents, Jesus said, I am the bread. And then the wine, you look up the blood, it says wine. And we know that talk, that's a type of blood. Well, Jesus if you look blood. up the Hebrew word uh, blood, it you actually says grape, grape juice. juice. Yes. Grape juice. That's I'm why sorry. we use grape juice for right. communion. Okay, Amen. go ahead. And so we know that he had blessed Abraham, and this was 400 years before the law had came. So in other words, tithing doesn't have anything to do with the law whatsoever. No, it doesn't. So tithing by faith was acceptable to God, and that covenant is the very covenant that he talks about in Galatians chapter 3? Yes. That's the covenant that is confirmed already, cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. And these guys all the way want to tell you on the television and stuff. They want to tell you how that they, they've got other covenants and all this kind of stuff. That's crazy. Isn't yes, it? it is. And also the um, tithing is not just for to put in the churches po or to preachers' pockets and to keep the money for themselves. It's for the poor. It's for uh, feeding the flock of God. Okay. In other words, you're using scriptures like... Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse verses 12, 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the year of tithing that it talks about, and this gives you the idea in this verse, uh, it's why we're using this verse, of what the tithe actually is for. Right. In other words, for the widow, mm -hmm. the fatherless. For the strangers. For the strangers. And for the Levites. And for the Levites and for the poor. Yes. Okay, so this was to help the minister to people. So, we as Christians are preaching the gospel, feeding the flock of God to whosoever will. You Amen. could actually uh, make a good argument that preaching the gospel uh, like this is across the countries uh, is a good ministry too. But let's go a little farther. These things that we do are necessary if you're going to follow the, follow the scriptures according to Romans chapter 4. And I believe that scripture tells us a whole lot, don't you? Amen. Romans chapter 4, uh, I think you can find the scripture here that we walk in the same steps of that father Abraham had, which he was uh, yet had uncircumcised. Yes, in verse 12. And Tell the, us what it says. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who walk, also walk in the steps of the faith, that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Okay, so before circumcision and the law ever come along, Abraham was justified by faith. Amen. So we walk in the steps that he did that we can be blessed. Now, Abraham was greatly blessed. Amen. He was overcoming all of his enemies. Mm -hmm. He was blessed with everything he did. And you know what? God was able not only that, but he was able to see his grandson saved, who was Jacob, in a sense, saved and serving God to become a great person. Amen. And now I want you to take us into our scriptures here. Brother Mark, take us into 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and give us a little bit about sowing and tell us what the difference in these two verses are and these two different ideas. Because now, now tithing, we've laid down the law as an example. I think we should use Genesis 26 also. But Genesis 26 says that God told Isaac not to go down where the blessings were according to his eyesight. Right, because there was a famine in the land, in the land of Canaan, where he was at. And he told him not to go into the land of Egypt. Well, now, wait a minute. That don't make any common sense, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but he had to live by faith and Amen. by the word of God. Amen. And so he was able to sow in the land where the famine was, mm -hmm. and God was able to bless him a hundredfold. Yes. Now, some people don't understand the idea that's involved here, but a hundredfold, Brother Mark, 
is more than enough, isn't it? Absolutely is. So, you know, as we give you the contrast between uh, tithing and, and sowing, we understand that tithing is our duty. And we gave you the idea of where that comes from and how it's to apply to our lives and what it's for. Now we're showing you sowing. And in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, he says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So we see here, Paul's giving this ideal, and, and we give you the ideal in Genesis 26 with Isaac and sowing in the right field. And as Pastor stated, it's not so much as, oh, I feel good with, with going here and sowing. No, let's see where God wants you to sow according to the scripture and according to okay, a good hold sound. it there. You said that a little fast it's not so much as places where you feel good or something like yes, that is, where, is, is where that you, what you said yes in other words you're going through the ideal of genesis 26 where god told isaac don't go down into egypt that's where the blessings are according to your eyesight yes. right and he has a similar thing in here in galatians chapter 6 he says be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that out that also shall he reap for if he that soweth to the flesh shall reap of the flesh corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting so if you're reaping to the spirit and if you're obedient unto the spirit and sowing to the spirit you're going to reap life everlasting okay genesis 26 also holds the idea when you sow in the field where God wants you to sow, and that's where the gospel is going forth. Right. Not to some airplane preacher or some billionaire preacher. Amen. Which that's a corrupted idea from the very roots. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, you've got to be willing to be envied by the Philistines. Is everybody going to agree with you? No. I don't think so. No. <laughs> but you know, that's a principle that they misuse that too. Amen. So anyway, when we're going into 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the word sowing here, when Paul told them, about sowing, he was actually going to help this poor saints at Jerusalem mm -hmm. from what we've learned out of this. If you take Strong's Bible Concordance and you look in the Greek, you find the number 4687 and 4685. These are very informative uh, numbers. And if you use a good Strong's Bible, Strong's Bible Concordance and a good key study Bible, you can get some great things out of this. Amen. Now, the ideal is here in 4685, Mark, of the word sowing, has the ideal of drawing out. Yes. So there's many blessings I hear in the lives of people, but, you know, they don't really water the seeds, and they don't really kind of bring this out. Now, the Holy Spirit has a lot of gifts when he comes in us, right? Correct. Tell us how to bring those gifts to the surface. Well, you know, even even as we know that sowing, it's a privilege to us. So now we see that we can sow, and, and it's a privilege. It should be a privilege to us that we can sow. And, and how do we draw out the Holy Spirit? We can draw them out by learning the Scripture, such as learning how to sow. So learning your Bible, learning how to sow, and pray about something that God will want you to sow to, and you could draw these things out of your life amen in matthew 13 he tells you a lot about how, how to sow and how to keep your heart right because if your heart is not right if your heart is hardened then guess what that sow that seed is not going to get down into the into the heart amen and so in matthew 13 23 he says but he that receives seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty so you got a hundred fold, sixty fold, and thirty fold. If you go back to Genesis twenty six, you find that Isaac received a hundred fold. Right. And I believe being there and sowing the way God wanted him to sow, I think that had a lot to do with it. Amen. You know, my opinion is that many people sow their good seed into the field of the wicked. Amen. Now I want you to to explain this, uh, Michelle. You're a Mark one. We know that some people call themselves Christians. But their very works show that they have the spirit of the Antichrist. That's right. Now, someone may be get mad at me for saying this, but look, you can put seeds in the field of the wicked. Amen. And the wicked is the Antichrist. He's against Christ our Savior. And I answer, ask you this, is the Bible that we have the same as Jesus in a person? Yes. Yes. We know the Bible said in John chapter 1 that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. His name before he came here was the Word of God. Amen. Now, can someone have the idea that Jesus is 
you know, well, they don't have the ideal sometimes, apparently, because they do things to actually come against the Bible. Give us the ideal, Mark, of how someone can call herself a Christian and have a spirit of the Antichrist. Well, let's just say that they don't believe, for instance, in this doctrine of tithing or sowing, where Jesus tells us in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And we've given you many scriptures of according to tithe and to sowing. So to think you can tithe, oh, I'm going to tithe to my mother, or I'm going to tithe to my brother, and I believe I'm going to tithe that way. No, that's totally not doctrine, and, and that's the way you can become part of the spirit of the Antichrist and say, say that you're going to tithe in this manner. So we understand that is one way. And we understand that if you do these things, you're going to link yourself to that spirit of the Antichrist. You're going to link yourself to coming against the spirit of truth when it's not doctrine and it's, it's not based in the Bible. Well, some people don't want to live by the word of God. They want to live by their human reasoning and things like that. But let's talk about sowing in the right field, Michelle. Amen. It has the ideal of extending yourself or to think about preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, if people had the ideal of what, uh, of what Stalin did, or Vladimir Lenin, how they took the seeds of the people, and they actually destroyed them and didn't want people to have a harvest for the following year, and they killed, uh, some people say, as many as 60 million people across Russia. Right. So tell us a little bit about this word, sowing, mm -hmm. and that Paul used this here, in uh, Strong's Bible Concordance, mm -hmm. under the number 4587, mm -hmm. which has the idea of extending yourself, and it has the idea of a scattering, sowing, and uh, literally, uh, you know, doing your thing. Right. you got to work at it. Sower, receiving seed. And you have to basically reserve yourself as basically sowing and sowing in the right field and making sure you have a prayer life and get into the word and study the scriptures because that's the only way that you're going to extend yourself and be able to be profitable and preserve yourself unto the Lord. What about Mark 16 verse 15? I think this is the great scripture. He said there, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be down. Amen. So you know this, the Bible said in the last verse of that chapter that they go preaching the word, and God worked with them confirming the word that they preached with signs following. Amen. And I think this is very uh, important because people need to stay with the scriptures when they're funding preaching, and I think it's a great thing to do to fund the real gospel. Amen. You know, you can hear stuff on Worldwide Christian Radio. I heard stuff on there that didn't even have one scripture in what they were preaching. Mm -hmm. You know, just trying to say stuff out of human reasoning and call it God. Right. I'm sorry, that is not really the Bible, and Amen. we got to preach the Word. And That's the right. Bible says, you know, the Word is confirmed with signs following. Amen. And if you're sowing into a field that's with bad doctrine, you're sowing into that doctrine, you're a partaker of that sin. Well, if you've got good seed in an in a, uh, evil field, like, you know, in these guys that support these airplanes and all of this kind of stuff, like John Hagee with his multiple billion dollar assets as a rabbi, and he called himself rabbi, even though Matthew 23, 8 says that call no man rabbi. Mm -hmm. This is things that's against the Bible. Well, I also think, you know, they always give you, you know, give a thousand dollar offering or whatever these people try to portray. But in Luke 21, 1 through 4, it talks about the widow and her giving little two mites and how Jesus said that was more than what they was casting in. And she done this okay. to preserve herself. Thank you very much for listening to our program. And I pray that you would put your seed in a good field. Because we have problems today with financing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that some of y'all would help us and stand with us some offerings and help us to stay on these stations. We've had to drop stations because we don't have any help. And I pray that you'd put some seed into the kingdom of God. And I believe in due time, you will reap if you faint not. You've been listening to the word of deliverance. Why don't you write to me at 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. And that's Dayton, Ohio, 454. Zero four, And if you'd like to email me at Pastor Inman at att.net, you can do that. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you very much. My name is Inman, I-N-M-A-N. -N. Have a great day. <laughs>